How buggy is Gloomhaven Digital? Today I'm talking with our resident Gloomhaven player, Cax. We're exploring how many glitches he's run into, how polished the game is, and he'll also offer practical strategies to beat the Sunken Vessel side quest, here on Legendary Tactics. I'm here with Cax today, and I'll be picking his brain about this game. Welcome, Cax. Hey, we are shoving off to the Misty Sea today and to the Sunken Vessel. So let's have a little listen in here. It's, uh, it's going to give us a, a cool little storyline, so let's, uh, let's check this out. You've been sailing your small rented ship along the coast for what feels like ages, looking for this forgotten shipwreck. Maybe if you hold the map closer, that will make its charts and figures more accurate and... With little hope remaining, you finally catch a glimpse of a foreboding island on the horizon. As it gets closer, you see the definite outline of a battered ship pinioned against the island's shoals, half sunk and barely held together. I love the flavoring. You, sail you do like that, yeah? You the far side of the yeah. island, where a remote and inviting beach allows for safer anchoring. The thought of what treasure awaits you on board the ship now warms you against the wind, but your thoughts also turn to what dangers may be guarding it. As your dinghy makes its way to the shore, you see a school of lurkers rise up from the surf to greet you. Who knows how long they've been following your ship from the depths, waiting for the opportune time to strike. So this now, we're, we're hidden into the part where I have got to decide my, uh, my each uh, character's objective for oh, the mission. Okay. And how do you decide this? So you kind of look at what's uh, the most uh, likely uh, ability or likely uh, thing that's going to happen. So uh, like for right now, for the scoundrel, you know, the dynamo option, killing four more monsters. I figure that's probably a, a, a likely scenario uh, that's going to happen. So Right. You, do you tend to go for the easier of the objectives to accomplish? I do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So where you're, you're going to probably be able to at least accomplish it, you know, uh, and of course, completing those objectives will give you perk points, which, uh, you know, uh, increases your your card draw when you're uh, facing off against the uh, the baddies. So. Oh, perfect. OK, so we're going to get into what cards you have a little bit later. But for people who haven't seen your other tutorials yet, can you give me a sense of how far into the campaign you are here? Yeah, so this is uh, my fifth uh, mission that um, I'm sort of tackling in with against the hard AI uh, with the, the Gloomhaven uh, app on Steam there. And uh, it's been uh, it's n quite noticeably difficult, actually. I've really noticed yes. uh, it's, it's ramped up a bit. So this is the hard um, AI you're playing. The hard AI. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So uh, it's a two or three steps up from, you know, the very the basic that you could do. So. Yeah, those looking for ideas on, you know, ways around, uh, you know, workarounds for different uh, enemies and, and what have you. This is uh, hopefully going to be of some help to you. So, OK, so maybe like four or five scenarios in here approximately. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So this is a side quest, the sunken treasure. So it's not mandatory to complete for the game, but uh, it looked I I saw the Misty Sea. I thought, oh, I, I got to head out there and check check this out. <laughs> so. Perfect. Yeah. Well, there's a bit of different flavor with the, the coloring of the map, too. Yeah, actually, it's a the vegetative look to it, eh? Yeah, absolutely, and all the blues rather than the usual browns. That's right. That's right. The, uh, yeah, for sure. So these two lurkers right now, it's it's kind of interesting. I don't know if, uh, if you just noticed there, but uh, so my scoundrel took a shot at them and uh, had the weapon that actually knocked through. It, it ignored their shield strength, which is... Perfect. Those, those They've two got two threes. shields and three shields, yeah. Yeah, so to, to like... Uh, because usually when you attack there, you any damage you give, the first damages go to each of those shields. So it's kind right. of kind of annoying. <laughs> so. so the so the scoundrel's ideal for this mission in particular at that early stage. Yeah, if you can, yeah, with, with that particular ability of, uh, 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 or that that weapon that it had, uh, the scoundrel has to ignore the shields is great. Yeah, you're doing excellent here. Wiping so the, these the guys berserker, out in the the, Yeah, the Berserker just did a good number on that uh, that first one there. So, Oh, excellent. Now, how does this scenario compare to the other ones that you've played? I know that uh, a lot of the time it's go into the room, kill the baddies, get out the other side. So uh, what are you noticing here? Yeah, similar. Um, the rooms are a little more expansive, so you're going to get a little more, uh, there's a little more maneuverability as far as the room goes, where in previous, some of the other previous uh, scenarios, you're, it's very prescribed where you must exactly go. They've, they've basically blocked it off. Okay. So it, it, it leads you almost through a tunnel of just because there's, there's just objects in the way. Does so, that feel limiting then, or do you enjoy that there's a focus? Ah uh, no, I, I like the I like the openness of it. It, it. it just creates a bit more of a sandbox. So, oh nice, okay. Yeah, 
so you can see now I've just opened up the room number two, and again, it's, it's pretty expand, like pretty pretty wide open. It's a little like you know, little hook to the right there, but yeah, that's right. Um, you really I, get pinched down into that doorway. Yeah, so I left I left the berserker to finish off that first that first lurker, and I thought, okay, I'll, I'll send my my scoundrel up and. Oh man, and that the bottom guy now has four shields, so that's pretty. <laughs> oh, that's punishing. So, that's do you think it would have been better there? Was that a mistake? Should you have kept your second guy back until that lurker was gone? Well, my thought was I I, I was worried about uh, the, the I find the scoundrel a little bit squishy, so I wanted to get him out of the way and and start working on the next, uh, you know, uh, using more range attacks with with the scoundrel. So. Right, because you started off with your melee attacks, so now you've got some ranged ones in your pocket. That's right. Yeah, 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 oh, exactly. Okay. Now, um, throughout the video, I'd really like to hear thoughts on specific strategy. We promised it in the intro, and we, we deliver at Legendary oh, Tactics. We deliver so. what we promise, indeed, yes. <laughs> so tell me, what are your thoughts on focusing your efforts versus diversifying against baddies? That seems like the decision you're up against now. Is it better to pick one one unit and really take it out quickly, or should you be like trying to get around and uh, take out ranged units from behind, or what? what's your approach here? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so, oh, and there was a great kill, by the way. Well See, done. That, yeah, yeah. Oh, Even though we had four shields, that, that double hit really helped. So, yes. uh, sorry, coming back to your question, though. Um, it, it It's very, very dependent on the enemy you're facing up against, I think, and also um, the the characters you currently have in play. So, for example, Scoundrel, right. Scoundrel has this ability where if the Scoundrel is beside an enemy and... Uh, the uh, my uh, the berserker is also beside that enemy, and no other enemies are adjacent. Um, one shot the one shot kill basically. There's a one shot right. kill card. It's it's that uh, card 88, the visage it, of the inevitable. It, so, do you have to burn that one permanently? No, to use no. That? That's the beautiful thing about it. That, that's wow. actually probably one of the most powerful cards from the scoundrel because it can get recycled again and again. Brilliant. Okay. So, so in that case, uh, definitely focusing effort. Now, the only caveat is that it has to. Besides those other I mentioned, is um, there are elite monsters. Uh, you'll notice the three monsters on the screen right now that we're facing off against. Uh, they have just perfect circles around their numbers. Yes. The Ten, the seven. So some of them will have like a spiky around them, and that indicates okay. that it's an elite monster, and uh, a fair bit more powerful. So. Um, Okay. The the, uh, the look out. Of the visage won't. Yeah, yeah. Look out, <laughs> and and the visage won't work against those. So. Okay. And now to my second part of my question: Do you prefer to take out ranged units first or the tanks? Um, I, I'm definitely tanks. Get rid of the tanks and get rid of uh, and and to the best you can focus on one particular enemy. Okay. It just means that there's less attacking you. So. That's right. Yeah. So uh, that's why even right there, I threw the poison on the uh, on the enemy with uh, with seven damage because I I'm hoping that that poison will get that one out quicker. Well, and that's the other question: is do you try to get some poison like some um, effects that work over time on them early, and then do the big hits afterwards, or when when do you time those? Yeah, so poison is great. It's it's a slow it's a slow bleed, so it's kind of it's it's a great. Um, it's a great tool, but as Nato's pointed out in previous, um, it, uh, it it you're not going to kill like that that ten monster right there is is going to take ten rounds to kill to kill it. It'll it'll definitely right. you know <laughs> it helps, probably, but it's yeah. not your primary weapon. <laughs> exactly, you can't you can't be completely reliant on poison. So yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, what about uh, timing your exhaust action when you refresh everything? That seems pretty critical. So, how do you decide when you refresh all your cards and and get? Oh, you the, take the, the long and the short back? rest. Yeah. No. Yeah. Do you do you ever do it before you're out of cards, or is this an you always use every card kind of situation? Well, if you're looking at the scoundrel right now, or it just flashed, but um, there were three cards remaining, so I I am I'll be able to play this round, and then after that. I'll have one card left. I'll I, I'm be, I'll be forced to short rest. So yep. sometimes I, I like to. You, you definitely want to wait as long as you can though on the resting because every time you rest, you have to burn a card. So and you find yourself basically going to the limit every time, or is there ever a strategic point at which you might recycle your cards sooner? So that's a great question because what could happen is, especially if you're low on health. Um, and a monster attacks you, you have the option to burn a card in your current hand 
to stay alive and, and avoid the damage. Right. So yeah. it's sometimes very wise to ensure that you already have at least at least have one or even two cards back if you're very low on health. So might just save the mission for you. That's oh yes, that, that heal. That, that actually I had a, a wound on me, so I was uh, the berserker was bleeding one every turn. So speaking of poison and, and wounds are another right. one. Where, so it's <laughs> yeah, you're you're managing that too. And here this is nice because you're you're focusing on that that little spider didn't advance until just now. So and he's he's going to be a lonely victim. Yeah, exactly. So I'll, and again, you know that that whole idea of you know limiting the number of of enemies you have to target is pretty important. So. Now, now do you one, wish? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that one that I'm currently down to two health on. Uh, it's actually pinned. It's pinned. It, uh, those are obstacles all around it, so it's kind of stuck right. in there. So this one actually does have a bit of a secure, a circuitous map you have to go through. Um, all those little pop-ups of, of greenery are uh, are obstacles. You can't you can't actually mm. traverse through those. So I've got that one lurker stuck in there, and so I could just slowly bash away at it. He's not going to be skittering away anytime soon. No, but the, the shields are a bit annoying. But uh, now in this case here, because my my scoundrels, or sorry, my berserker's pretty healthy, I, I went down and used all the berserker's cards. Oh, okay, so yeah. that's fine because there's no way a berserker will lose 11 health this round. So, do you ever wish you could switch up your team comp in between scenarios and say come in with uh, the tinkerer or someone like that instead of the berserker? Or um, are you pretty happy with uh, your build here? Well, that's actually one of the one of the things I really like about this game is that um, you uh, you get to try all these new characters out, and it's sort of experiment and, and find the synergies between the the current characters you're using. So, um, as your as your character kind of progresses, and or when you get a new character, you you're given an an, uh, an objective for that character, and as soon as that objective is met, you know whether it's you know kill you know kill fifty lurkers or you know. Um, right. I already lost the brute because the brute's first oh. object. I know, I know. I started so with the sad. brute. It, it was very sad because like, you start get the other thing is you get attached to these guys. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the brutes, um, when when I when the brute was picked, uh, the objective was if you die twelve, if you're exhausted or or die twelve times, the brute retires. <laughs> oh. now, <just laughs> and I lost twelve games. So. <laughs> oh, just between you and I, did you shed a tear when that happened? There was a little sadness, but then I saw the berserker come in. I was like, "Okay, now let's let's rock and roll. Let's see who this guy is." So there was there was a, there was a, an anticipation right behind that sadness that <laughs> came just on. filled the void, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And I guess we should get to talking about particular cards that you're using in your deck here. Uh, I think part of the game you're you're looking to get the the perfect combination of cards. So uh, are there any cards that really worked well in this build? And just tell me about your thought process behind what cards you bring to the fray. Yeah, so this this Flurry of Blades card that I'm using right now for the, the scoundrel I really like. Um, oh. It attacks two, it has a range of three, and you can target up to three enemies. The attack is low, but uh, you can just sit from the uh, you know the periphery pe pelting away there. And, and you get an experience for that too? You get an experience, and, and the bottom half is even bad, or not bad, because you get to move four squares if you want to use the bottom. Oh, so you can cover some ground pretty fast. Cover some ground, yep. Uh, this one here, both the spiked armor and the the, the dazing wound are great. It, uh, I, I really like the spiked armor. The move the, because the bottom half there move to and attack all enemies for two. So you can really, if you can get into a cluster of enemies, you can just go, you know, ping, 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 right? Brilliant. Yep. Okay. As long as as long as there's no retaliate, that's the one. When they when the enemies have retaliate on them, that's the one drawback. And I'm. I'm uh, you can be up against it where you because every time you hit an enemy with retaliate, you get damaged. So, absolutely. Yeah. So okay, in the intro, there was one question that we really have to get here uh, to, and that's um, there was a fellow named William McNeil who posted a comment on our Gloomhaven video where I compared the cardboard to the digital game, okay. and I still stand fully behind my arguments in that video. Uh, <laughs> As we do had, I. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we had a great uh, a little banter back and forth with William, but he said he's really frustrated by digital games that get released and they're full of bugs and glitches. And I don't. Do you remember when we played Blood? rage oh my gosh blood rage that was it was a bit of a disaster it was horrible i mean we yeah. got it on the first day and it was we so, so full excited of, it was, about it it was unplayable like it, it, it was really weird. was it really was we we tried i don't know three four five times and and 
it just kept freezing and glitching and it was awful and it spoiled the experience because I haven't even wanted to go back and play that game since because of that experience. Yes, yes. So I, I completely sympathize with that uh, that perspective. So William was was frustrated and, and wasn't as interested in this digital edition. So for any who are watching this video to find out, uh, you've played over 100 hours of the game. Uh, can you tell me how many times the game has glitched on you? Any bugs that you've run into? How polished is this? Do you think it was ready to go? The game just came out in October. And uh, I'm wondering if you can answer uh, William's question about, uh, you know, how, how ready was this to come out? And are you are you satisfied with the product you paid for? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I, 100%. I, uh, I think there's maybe been one or two freeze ups as you're uh, like in the loading stage when I'm coming into steam that i've had but like over 100 hours of gaming i you know to have to just restart steam once yeah. or maybe twice uh, and was that a steam a, problem rather than a i don't even yeah it's, it's hard to even like really pinpoint where the where the, the you know the, the the bug happened okay uh, the only other thing i would say about as far as glitching is i mean the load time on my my rig is a bit slow to get it up but uh you know it, your vic 20 just doesn't spool it up <laughs> the, the atari 2600 that's right yeah. <laughs> the commodore 64 oh, processor just go. won't keep up <laughs> the little hamster <laughs> yeah yeah because that being said your computer is probably a couple years old right that's true that's true um and, but i mean it's it's probably not any longer than what what modern day you know say you know a playstation systems would would be doing or what have you so right. so a little bit of, of slowness there how about um freeze ups in the game or just places where you know your character just disappears and no. like falls into the no. wall or no absolutely no none nothing. of that no no zero yeah no this has been the the the, the play testers and the developers have taken their a lot of time and care with this game and i i think this is just an amazing amazing format so, okay. Yeah. Well, and I remember having this game in the beta mode where they said basically you can buy the game now. We're not releasing the full campaign for a while. And that felt like it was like a couple of years where we owned the skeleton of the game. And I think they were just fixing and tweaking and yeah. testing. And so, uh, oh, yeah, and even, overall. even since then, there's been some sizable patches that have come through. So, I mean, they are still... It's, it's still a work in, 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 in progress, which I think is great because they're, they're still yes. like aiming for excellence, which is awesome. Right. Well, in, in the good old days, you would get a cartridge and whatever game was in there, that's what the game was. And now I think it's the curse and the blessing of being able to add, update, fix, rebalance games. And uh, so overall, though, you give it a, a really strong oh, review. Oh, man. Like, yeah, A+. Plus. Yeah, A+. Plus. Yeah, I think it's great. Okay. So, so now, what what is it about this game that keeps it really fresh for you? Is there something that uh, keeps you wanting? Because I think your goal is ultimately there's what like eighty scenarios or ninety, 90 scenarios or something. Ninety something, I think. Yeah, there is a and lot of scenarios. Yeah. Do you think you'll get all the way through? And and if so, what is it that would carry you through this game that keeps you coming back? Well, I think it's probably the reason why Gloomhaven, or a lot of the reasons I have, are why Gloomhaven is so popular right now. A, a, I like the dungeon crawler. Uh, B, I am a sucker for a narrative, so I just love this this narrative stream that they put together. Yeah. Uh, I really, really love the uh, the card mechanic of this game, where it's top half, bottom half, and choose yes. your two cards. I think that's brilliant. Um, in this particular, playing the hard AI, um, the you have to maximize your you have to maximize your your turns so precisely. You, you there's no time to waste and. NATO and I have, have have harped on it in other episodes as well, where it's there's just no time to do anything yep. except complete, you know, to, to uh, your objective. You can't go chasing treasure chests, and so I I love the the sort of the, the frantic pace of the game when you're in. You love stressful games like Twilight uh, Struggle and Android Net Runner. Hard, yes, hard, yeah, hard choice games where you can do this or you can do that, but you can't do both. That's right. That's right. So so take a pick and and uh, hope it's hope it's for the best, right? So yeah, uh, wow. I, I also yeah. absolutely think their their as I mentioned earlier, their their whole character mechanic is brilliant. I just think that's so cool. And that what about it? Do you like that? Really keeps the game fresh because just when you you know you. you I couldn't imagine having played 96 episode or uh, scenarios with, you know, Brute and Scoundrel. Right, yes. But I could certainly imagine playing 10 with them. And yes. then and then t 10 with uh, two new characters, right? So 
Um, I, as it turns out, I only got to play about, you know, two scenarios with Brute. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to see how long oh. the, uh, the Berserker and Scoundrel last together, but, <laughs> which is yeah, another great thing. Well. You, you never know who's going next and you never know who you're going to get next. So I, 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 and I, I love the, the, uh, the, the challenge of having to, you know, redefine the synergies between two new characters. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, and you and I both love the narrative element. So for me, when you have characters come and go. Um, that that really makes a game shine for me. Yes, yes, and, and you know what? There's a, sometimes, as you mentioned earlier, there's uh, I I know Nato's often mentioned it where there's a bit of heartache sometimes whenever you you actually do lose a character, yes. you become attached to them. And, yes. Uh, like I've had Scoundrel now. Now this is the fifth episode with Scoundrel. I, I, I'm wondering how I'll feel about right. oh man, losing Scoundrel and the ability Scoundrel head that I I don't have anymore. And, yeah. And, and you actually, when you get a new character, you have to start all over with them, right? You start at, at level one. That's and you right. Have to slowly you need to build figure them out up. Their, their cards and how they pair up. And, yeah, and you only you start know. with the base cards of that character. So you have to you have to start experiencing them up and getting them to a point where you're getting some uh, some new and powerful cards into their deck. So that can be frustrating too, though, because some people once they get a character built up and you know weapons galore, they they kind of want to keep that. So. Uh, but do you do you see any downside to uh, losing the characters, or does it just feel like the cycle of life? No, I, I well, there's definitely a downside because generally when you've lost the character, you have stacked them up so heavily that. Um, by the way, this was a very risky move here. That was you <laughs> just barged right in. Berserker at six health, and I I barged into a, th a room of three baddies. <laughs> yeah, so is that something thank, you often do? I know uh, as a player generally, that's your strategy. I am generally inclined to uh, to pull the high risk, high reward maneuvers off. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Nice. So, oh, and see right there, I just took six six damage, so I actually have to burn, burn a card. card. Yeah. Oh, to stay boy. in the game. So, and what what's going through your mind here about which card to get rid of? Um, a card that's not necessarily going to be helpful, like, um, so for example, that attack two, when they have three yeah. shield, is not as powerful a card. Right. Uh, so you need something with piercing damage or... Yes, yes. Piercing damage or high attack, like that attack six is pretty good. Yes. Um, there's, a, there's, a little, there's a little, one. there's a pretty excellent combo that I do like to use with the Berserker. Now this one here. Okay, so I, I'm going to take five damage. Ouch. I don't really want to lose another card though because your cards are like gold. So I, I'm kind of in. I'm, I'm yes. kind of debating this one here. It's like, do I want to hit five damage down to one? Oof. I do have a. I do have a pretty sweet. Um, it's from the brink. Uh, if you look at the top half of it, it and then the bottom half of, uh, I believe it is final thought. Maybe no. Oh no, I must have buried it already. Um, so basically, there's a card that allows you to jack up to 26 health, extended health. Okay. Uh, yeah. But you keep your current health, and then you get to from the from the brink well, from the brink there will heal you uh, half that health back up. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. So it's a great way to just rejuvenate yourself. Uh, You're so good at finding synergies in these card games. Like as you say, Android Netrunner, like that's your bag. You yes. you thrive at these. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really enjoy those kinds of. Uh, it's kind of puzzles, so I want you to be my dungeon pal when I get back <laughs> into this game. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, we will. We will crawl it, man. <laughs> nice. You can coach so, the whole world, but most especially, you can coach me through the game. <laughs> oh, I, I could, I, I, oh I, we'll, we'll do it together. It'll be a team effort. <laughs> okay, so here's a question. It, I wonder if scenarios like this have a lot of different paths to victory. And so, for people watching the video, could you please let us know if you use the same approach that Cax used here, or if you had success with something different, and and also, I want to invite you to freely critique Cax's gameplay. Oh, uh, you got do. super please thick do. skin, eh? So yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. we're Love trying to, to improve our gameplay on, on where I can do better because uh, I, I have a lot of episodes to get or a lot of scenarios to get through. So please let me know. That's right. <laughs> and Cax can be a bit of a bonehead sometimes. So if <laughs> if, if you saw boneheadedness, please uh, tell us about it, and uh, yes. we'll we'll, we'll do our, I'll do my best to to auto correct there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But but do you think there's a lot of different paths, or uh, do you find that generally there's only one or two ways to beat a scenario? Yeah, I think there's. I think there is multiple ways to get through it. I do. Uh, I had to hit the trap right there, which kind of sucked, and it also froze me. Okay. Um, yeah. Speaking of uh, multiple paths, but I did have to try and get to that. So, for example, right there, like I could have potentially used my scoundrel from afar. 
and yes. tried to, to peg off that. Um, uh, that it's pretty the, the weak, right? there. But I, yeah, I thought no, I'm going to get up close, and uh, I, I do have cool. to definitely heal my. You are right? on death's doorstep, my friend. This is not looking good for the legendary but, team. But not for long there. Now <laughs> look at that—a heal of 17. Oh gosh! Okay, yeah, that, that see that was that changes. was the power card from of, from the brink. The, yes. The difference between your max health and your current point. So I was down to one. So <laughs> it totally <laughs> healed me up to my max. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is is finding the right time for the card because that card is fine if you're a little bit damaged, but it's amazing if you're a lot damaged. Yes. Yes. Now it was a super risk to play it because I wasn't sure when I was going to get. Uh, the initiative turn, right? So if, if the bad guys had actually uh, drawn a lower initiative card on me, they would have gone first and attacked, and I would have been either I would have had to have burned cards. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so yeah, I do think there's multiple paths. I mean, there's there's some basic premise, like for example, in that middle room we just went through, um, there was really only one way to go about that room. You had to follow the path they they outlined. Right. Yeah, it's pretty linear. Yeah, and as you can see, even even with this room, it's it's fairly linear as well. I mean, you have to kind of follow. You, you there's there's obstacles set up. So uh, this this, although it's it's more open, there's still very much. Uh, there's two paths. You you go to the left or you go to the right. That's right, and you have to kind of yep. follow. You have to, so you can zip around if you want, but you know, again, there was there's traps set up, and you're you're at your own peril, right? So. Right. Now, I tend to be a really narrative-based gamer, and something I wish that, that happened is when you open that door, for instance, I would love if there was a little cutscene with those characters, you know, taunting you or uh, giving a little bit of dialogue or something like that. What are your thoughts on um, whether that they should have done that? So you'll notice, uh, I, don't, I don't want to give too much of a spoiler away, but uh, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll get you to hold that thought, <laughs> and we, we may see something like that at some point. <laughs> Yep. No. Okay. But I, I, I will, I will say that it's generally at the end where you get those, those little, uh, those little cinematics. Cool. And, uh, yeah. It, it is actually kind of cool because what will happen is, um, in previous episodes uh, and scenarios, uh, at the end of a scenario, it'll, it'll have a little, little cinematic or at least a little bit of dialogue, and then it'll actually show you back to the the main Gloomhaven board, and all of a sudden the unlocked. Um, new locations that you've opened by beating the scenario pop up neat okay so it actually yeah it uh, it, it does have that now in game yeah not so much it's, it's not through the middle of the game it tends to be beginning and end correct correct yep. yeah yeah and so I wonder maybe, if that would just maybe take a... way too much time for for the programmers <laughs> well yeah because i was you know i was potentially going to suggest there's a way they could actually improve it but i don't know maybe it's also a, a question of uh, most games take between 25 to you know 50 minutes right so yep. do they want to expand expand that to you know you know 40 35 to you know an hour and a half you know kind of thing yeah do they want to go that direction it does feel like the kind of game where that that could work because it's not like you're running around blasting people like run and gun style first person shooters right so there are pauses it is a bit of a slower game and actually, people are mostly if you're playing Gloomhaven, you're here for the for the the dungeon crawling experience, right? So absolutely, yeah. It's it's not just rolling dice and you know chucking swords and weapons at your the baddies, right? You want a little bit more depth. So yeah. oh, and one thing I should mention to you too is the uh, emergence of different characters in Gloomhaven in the main storyline. Okay. Uh, so yeah. there's a character called Jaxera, and Jaxera yes. keeps appearing at different points in the story. And telling you to do things, and you have options to either, and then other characters are saying, "Don't listen to her, don't follow her." So you kind of have—it's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure as far as do you want to, do you want to see, you know, do you want to go against her and see what happens, or do you want to, you know, follow her lead and see where she takes you? Ooh. So now I kind of, I kind of love that. Going on? Have you been listening uh, to her? Or no? I've been, I've been kind of killing her so far. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going after her. Uh, yeah, that was the previous episode. I went and killed her minion, her, her big bodyguards, and I'm chasing her down. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. Oh, we'll yeah. we'll link to that now above. No, did you, uh, did you have have some success there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, that was that was a mission accomplished. I doubt, but she escaped. She escaped the room. So oh, of course, she I did. don't know. So potentially, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they're not going to kill her off. That there's 96 episodes, man. There's a lot to yeah. there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> right, that's going to come back to haunt you for sure. You should have been friendly. 
it's very interesting with this game uh, as you as you play it because we we did we did miss it in this opening I guess because when you go to Misty Sea you don't get it but mostly you get an encounter as you go some to one of the uh, locations. I love and, that part uh, of the game. Those are it fun. is very fun and, and oftentimes it'll be things like you know eat the berries or don't eat the berries. <laughs> That's uh, right. And yeah. by the way, pay, always pay eat the, the vermlings or. Always eat the berries and um, yeah, pay yeah. the vermlings or kill or the kill vermlings. the vermlings. Yeah, exactly. Always, like it's very extreme. Always kill. You must kill. <laughs> always <them>. kill. <laughs> I, 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 now, one thing, another clue is always, always, uh, never shoot at the birds. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, because they're innocent creatures of the sky. Yeah, I, I've tried it a few times, just just out of to no, do like testing that, on it, and every why time would you do I. <laughs> Because I want to see that's, if they, they drop some treasure or something, or like you know, it's horrible. It, it is like, horrible. Like, what are you gonna get a feather from? They don't carry pouches or anything. You'd be surprised, man. <laughs> there is actually one where you you pay for this random coin that someone's gonna give you, and you get. I unlocked a, a new level uh, in the map, so that's uh, you. You can get bonuses for the the most mundane of things. <laughs> oh no! If I remember right, you were trying to find a treasure in here. So you yes. must be getting close to the end of the um, adventure. Okay, so this is the final room, and that is the final baddie. Okay. And I'm looking around. I'm trying to see if there's a... I don't see the treasure chest in there. It's got to be in there somewhere. Oh, jeez. Now, and before the video is over, I'd like to hear, do you have any particular strategies that work well against the hard AI um, overall, like holistic strategies that you would suggest? Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, you always want to try and take out... Uh, if, if you're especially if there's clusters of uh, monsters take out a target on one get rid of focus. one yep. yeah focus on one then, focus on one and move quickly i think you said earlier too yeah yes keep keep moving for certain you don't want you can't there's no time to oh there's the treasure it's directly behind that guy is uh, it that tipped over uh, that little box there thing? yeah now yes yes this was a real crux of pain for me by the way i, I, I uh because I, I didn't have a lot of time or cards left, and it's you know, and this this enemy is, is fairly fairly uh, well shielded at four. Yes. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh! And you're getting low. Well, and speaking of time left, there is still time left if people want to subscribe to our channel, if they want to like the video, all of that helps us out. Uh, rewards Cax for his playtime here, and uh, we we certainly appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, yes, or yes. if you like enjoyed this, just we'd love to see. Let it. us know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so anyway, yeah. So now we're kind of in a dilemma here. So my my uh, my berserker's down to two, uh, looking pretty bleak. Yeah, uh, this this is not looking good. No, no. Uh, now one, one can be exhausted. Oh. I mean, I can lose one as long as they both don't die. So I do yes. have that uh, that ability. Sacrifice. However, gonna... now now the uh, the scoundrel is down to three cards. So I only have uh, two turns left with the scoundrel before the scoundrel will oh. exhaust. Gosh, and you got those four shields, which, uh, yeah. who's better at getting through and shields? And I have that treasure these? chest that I would love to get to. So this is that yes. whole that whole dilemma of the hard AI again, where it's you just can't do everything. Yeah. Oh, you, look at you flitting all around on, oh, which card do I, I take? Know, I know, <laughs> I know, exactly. Swift low, open wound, swift low, visage, swift low, open wound. <laughs> Trying to decide, it, it becomes a real, oh. real conundrum. So, um we're gonna to have to try and get really lucky against that that four shield. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's lots of different permutations here. So here here was the big decision: do I go for that treasure chest and land on it? But I have to be there that Greedy. turn to get it. Yes. But with two health, I can't really afford to lose much. Or do I go in and fight the the last? What kind of movement get? does that? Will that character move if you had landed on the treasure there? Would they move towards uh, you? It, it, sometimes it will move towards you. Sometimes it'll move away from you. It it, it kind of has its own its own uh, prerogative. Okay. All right, so I've whittled I whittled it down that... one health, one health, okay. and it's poisoned. So we're we're well. That's we're... a good sign. Okay, so he's hitting me for four. Okay, so that's a bit of a hit, but I, I cannot afford to do anything but take a take a hit there. You just got to take it. Yep. So now, do I do I send him over or do I send the Berserker oh, yeah. to attack? If I know you, you send him right to the front line. <laughs> yeah, 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 I got, I got to Get attack. Get in there, hit him for now, all your worth. This blood patch is a great card. You attack for six, but you suffer half your current health. So oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going for broke here. Oh, and I got him! Oh, I got oh, him! Oh, brilliant! <laughs> so, that was a power play. That so was it well was done. the power play, but unfortunately, I was literally one square away from the treasure chest. The spirits seem oh, calm. The, and the lurkers have retreated. You've looted what you can from the ship. 
and are very eager to sail back to Gloomhaven to get your feet onto warm, dry land. We are ready for dry land. You take one last look at this strange island and its impaled ship. And the then strange exactly island is that. now in our rear view mirror. And More here's our bad. victory stats. So actually, stats. the dynamo was completed for, um, I believe that's the scoundrel. Uh, that was successful. We got some records here. Enemies killed. Look at that damage done. 48 by the scoundrel. Very well done. Well, thanks so, so much for your time, Cax. Appreciate all the strategies you've given us. Appreciate the review of the game and uh, where it's at in terms of its uh, glitchiness. And uh, we'll catch you again in the next video. What scenario is up next? Uh, I am trying to head north to the Copper Neck Mountains. Uh, and it has been a bit of a battle, but we'll see if we can't get that one done. We'll catch you there on Legendary Tactics.